Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. I was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Through many dangerous toils and snares, I've already come. Tis grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. The Lord has promised good to me, his word my hope secures. He'll be my shield and my portion be as long as life endures. Yes, when this flesh and heart shall fail and mortal life shall cease, I shall possess within the veil a life of joy and peace. When we've been there a thousand years, but shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Spirit of living God, thank you for today and thank you for this lesson. Thank you for your grace and mercies. Have us learn what you have for us to learn in this lesson. Thank you, my Heavenly Father. Thank you and Amen. Acts 6, 3-5 Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom ye we may appoint over this business, but we will give our, ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, of, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. Philip was one of the seven people who were chosen to serve the poor of the early church, one of the first deacons. Acts 8, 4 through 8 says, Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto him. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying Loud voices came out of many that were possessed with them, and many were and many taken with palsies, and they that were lame were healed, and there was great joy in that city. Philip, a deacon and not an apostle, performed miracles. John four forty eight says then Jesus said, Then said Jesus unto them, Except ye see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Signs and wonders are to give prospective believers undeniable proof. These proofs aren't just for the early church. The age of the apostles doesn't exist. Philip was an evangelist, not an apostle, yet he performed miracles. There are, 
our perspective believers God wants reached today. God wants you to give God wants to give you undeniable proof. He wants you to be able to say, I was ill, but he healed me. There is no arguing with that. I was sick, I prayed, I claimed his promise, now I'm not. God wants to give you such a rock solid testimony. These prospective believers need to be reached with your testimony. They will see the sign and wonder, then they will believe. John 14.12 says, Barely, barely, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. The signs and wonders performed by Philip, by the apostles, and by Jesus are available for us to perform today. All that is needed is that we be full of faith in the Holy Ghost. Our God is the same yesterday as today as forever. If he did it for somebody back then, he'll do it for you today. If it is in the Bible, it is promised. If it is promised, he will do it. He won't change his mind about his promises. Numbers 23:19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? To repent here is to go back on his word, change his mind. He won't do it. A lot of people who claim to be believers don't believe that healing is for today. They ignorantly say that because it isn't after the book of Acts, God doesn't do it anymore. God didn't repent. He didn't change his mind. He is the same. Hebrews 13.8 says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Those who claim healing isn't after the acts just haven't ever read the book they claim to believe. Second Timothy Second Timothy two fifteen says Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If they were serious believers who wanted to shew themselves approved unto God, they would read James 5, 14-16 is any, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faith one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That that is a healing ministry, exactly. And it is in a book nearing the end of the Bible, way after the book of Acts. The dictionary defines faith as belief that is not based on proof. This is incorrect. God wants to give incontrovertible undeniable proof that leaves absolutely no room for doubt. Are you in a wheelchair? God is telling you to get up and walk. Are you blind? Open your eyes and see. 
Are you deaf? Turn on the radio and listen. He wants you to have undeniable proof. Joel 3.10 says, Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. I was weak, but now I'm strong. I was chair bound, but now I can walk. I was blind, but now I see. I was deaf, but now I hear. That is your undeniable proof. Just claim it and believe. Matthew 21, 22 says, And all things whatsoever ye ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Thank you, God. Thank you for your love and mercies. Thank you for your healing touch. Thank you for protecting us and keeping us safe. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you and amen.